Today I'm going to talk about ground fault circuit interrupters or GFCI. A ground fault circuit interrupter is exactly what it says it is. It's a circuit interrupter, meaning it will stop any circuits from this point on. So if power comes to this and you have other outlets that are connected to this further down the line, it's going to stop anything from here on and protect it. If you take and splash water on this or on another outlet that's after this, it's going to trip. And that's what we want. This prevents hazards. That's why they're required outdoors or anywhere where water is. So in your bathrooms or your kitchens, you need to have GFCI units. I'm going to show you how I change this one and I'm going to explain how it's done. Right here, if you look at it close, you can see there's a line and there's a load. Okay? And you have a silver side and a brass side. The silver side always connects to white. That's the common. The brass side is going to take your hot, which is going to be black in most cases. Okay? Right here, you have the load side. The load side hooks up to anything after this unit. That means that this unit protects everything from there on that gets hooked up to this side. This goes to your power coming from your wall that is fed from the box. Never take this out unless you know the power's off. So I'll take this tester and I'll put it in here. And once I put these two prongs in this slot right here, you don't need to worry about this bottom slot. This is a ground. You put them in there and this is going to light up. That tells me I have power. This tells me I have 120 volts coming from there. Okay, now I want to check this. To check it, I'll push the test button. You heard it click. Once I put this back in here after it was um, tested and you can see it's, it's shut off. That means that this test button works and that this outlet works. I'll push it back on and you can see it's still working. I'm going to change this one out because it's getting a little old and I can see a couple little burn marks on there where it had gotten hot. So I want to take this out and replace it because they do go bad after time. But before I take this off, you always make sure you have no power to it. I'm going to go shut the breaker off. Now that I shut the breaker off, I'm going to double check this and make sure I have no power to it. I'll put these prongs in, it's reset, and I still have nothing, no movement, so I know this is dead. I usually use a cordless drill when I remove these screws, but I will not use a cordless drill to put my electrical connections on because if you over tighten this with a drill and over torque it, you will break it. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to take it off with this and use a regular screwdriver to put my wires back on. When removing these wires, don't get confused and just take them all loose and have four wires hanging out there because sometimes they're twisted together and you know, you won't know which ones go together. After you remove these wires, you have the two up and the two down. You'll take and remove your ground. Now that we have the power on, I'm going to take and check this. Of course, I have nothing here, so you know that is your load. The two bottom ones I'm going to check, and it is lighting up. So I know this is my line. So I'm going to shut the power off again, and then I'm going to hook this up. You see these holes right here? These holes are fantastic on this type of outlet because you can take this wire and push it right in there and tighten it up from the side. I like this, this way of doing it because it is easy and it works well. So I'm going to show you. All you do is take that wire, you shove it right into that hole, goes all the way down, and you can pull that wire back out, you see? It doesn't clamp. It will only clamp once I tighten it down. So it's in there and I'll just tighten it down. You get it good and secure and make sure it's really tight. You see this box right here is plastic. 
I'd take the plastic boxes over the metal boxes any day. So if I take this and I put it in this outlet and over time it loosens up a little bit or someone tries to adjust it and they hit that side with a metal box, it's going to conduct and short out. If I have a metal box in there, I'll take electrical tape and I'll wrap around this. That way if it hits on there by accident, it won't short out. Now I have my box in place, I'm going to snug it up and we'll go turn the power on and make sure this works. Now the power's on, I'm going to put uh, reset and you see this light, it lights up right here, that means that this is working. The unit that I replaced right here worked just the opposite as this one. This unit stayed lit until you tripped it and then it would go out. This unit is dark and when you trip it, it lights up. So just make sure you know what type of unit you have when you, when you test it and you can see this one lights up. So while it's lit, I should not have any power even though I turned the breaker on. Okay, I have no power. I'm going to reset it and we're going to check it. And you can see I have power. Everything's working correctly. Now I can put the cover on and we're finished. Well now that you have a little better understanding of how electricity works, I have a lot more projects to cover this summer. So check me out on Paul's Toolbox. If you like it, press like or make a comment. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.